he's approved enough that they're not worrying about him dying after the first week or so. Um, what was the first sign that he was looking for? He would respond more to physical stimulation when he was, you know, he was still in the coma. Um, he started getting more physically agitated, um, which is a typical symptom. Um, he didn't necessarily wake up per se, but he would, I think, become, he was becoming more aware of move, if they moved him, um, if there was some really weird noises, um, things like that. It was a little subtle, subtle things at times. When did they do the surgery on his leg? Um, I believe it was the following day in the afternoon. So the day after that? Yeah, it was either the day, the day after or the following day after that. I can't recall now. But, uh, did he start to become, as he started to wake up, did he start to become uncomfortable to have that part of his body touched? Or? No. No, actually, no. They um, they postponed it from doing the surgery immediately because he just wasn't stable enough, you know. And then when they stabilized him and he was, they were able to do the surgery. They did the surgery, but um, they were able to take care of it all in one surgery, and it was a, a clean operation, if you will. And um, by the time he came to and was aware, they had him on, you know, they had him on enough painkillers that. He didn't really feel anything, and by the time he actually became alert and aware, it was well on its way. You know, I mean, it was healing well. Talk to us about that first. He was there in Marshall a couple more weeks after he woke up. He was in the ICU, unconscious for two weeks. Um, then he was in several other wards uh, for the next, I want to say, three and a half weeks. crazy. Um, he didn't recognize anybody. He didn't know who we were, didn't know who any of us were. No, he, he couldn't identify. He, he um, didn't recognize anybody for probably after he woke up for another week and a half to two weeks. Um, he would recognize some people sometimes and other people at other times. And you could walk in one day, he might know who you were. He'd walk in another day, he didn't have a clue. Uh, he wouldn't, he didn't talk a lot, you know. But then when he would, he would go off on a tangent of something out of a dream world. And you couldn't veer him away from that. That was an all obsessive conversation. And um, he would get very upset. Um, he would get very agitated. Um, if he were, uh, the sounds, sounds bothered him. Um, he, he just had just so many problems at that time. How long did it take him to be aware of where he was? He was not really aware of where he was until he was in the nursing home at Norwood. What about, um, when did he start to recognize you? Uh, about, oh, almost two and a half weeks after he woke up. Then he started recognizing us when you know we'd come in. Uh, the first week after he was awake, there was really not a lot. Um, during the second week, if we told him, oh, okay, yeah, then he would start piecing it together. But it was, you know, it was down the road. When he's laying in the coma, all you're praying for is for him to wake up, to live and wake up. Mm -hmm. It was it was hard because it, it it made you wonder what what are we getting um, what what are we getting back and what are we getting into you know it was it was it wasn't that we weren't gl glad he was alive but we worried that he would never be aware of anything. I mean, oh, we were just really, we weren't sure. I mean, they weren't, you know, they, and they told us out too that they didn't, 
know for sure if he would ever really be anything, you know, much beyond a vegetable at that time, you know. Even though he was aware, he was awake and telling you the stories? Well, when he got to that point, they, were, they still were not sure how far he'd go. You know, the, they, they were never sure of, of exactly how far he would progress back to normalcy.